Well, we're showing Maddie where her daddy goes to work and why I leave every day at one o'clock. So it'll be fun showing her Dodger Stadium and see if she uh, even opens her eyes or if she just kind of wants to sleep, but she's be beautiful. Let's throw her around. What do you think, Manny? What do you think? You want to see it? All right. All right, cool. <laughs> As the COVID-shortened 2020 season nears an end, outfielder A.J. Pollock brings his six-month-old daughter Maddie to Dodger Stadium. A happy moment in contrast to the difficult and uncertain months that preceded it. In March, Maddie was born three months premature and remained hospitalized for the first four months of her life during a pandemic. In June, A.J. tested positive for the coronavirus had to quarantine away from his family and considered opting out of the 2020 season. Pollock ultimately decided to play and today is showing his daughter where he put together a stellar 2020 season. Uh, I mean, you know, baseball is such a big part of our life and, you know, with what we went through with Maddie and we knew she was gonna be a part of this uh, eventually and, um, yeah, it's cool. I know she's, uh, hopefully she, you know, soon she'll get to come and experience it. And um, yeah, I mean, that's why I have to go to the ballpark every day at one o'clock and I miss so much time, but it's a pretty special place I get to go to. And uh, yeah, I think she's gonna be pretty excited when she gets to really take this all in and, and just, uh, you know, get to experience the crowd, get to experience just going to a baseball game. The 3-2 to A.J. Pollock is lifted in the air to left field and deep. Back towards the wall. It is gone! On this 1-1 from Montas, he hits a fly ball to center field that sends Canna back to the edge of the track, sizes it up at the wall, and it's gone! What a second season A.J. Pollock is having so far with the Dodgers. Despite all of the off-the-field complications, Pollock managed to remain healthy and focused. He finished the regular season ranked third in hits and RBIs in a potent Dodger lineup and his 16 home runs tied for the team lead. Fly to center field, sending Adele back onto the warning track. Pollock's hit his second today. What a finish to the regular season for A.J. Pollock. In the past, with adversity, I've kind of just let it get to me and, and, you know, make it bigger than it is. But this year was just, I felt like I, I did a pretty good job of just uh, staying in the moment. It's an environment where you feel really good when you get here, even if you've been through a lot of stuff that, uh, you know, everyone's pulling for each other, everyone's got each other's back, and this is where we wanted to be. We wanted to be around, around these people. What do you think, Maddie? Tell him, Maddie. Let him know. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. And then she's good. It's amazing. That's it. And she's asleep. What a lie. What did you think, Maddie? No? Nothing. She wasn't really that impressed. <laughs> Maybe next year she'll be impressed. Next on Backstage Dodgers, a fashionable surprise for pitcher Walker Bueller. Got some heat. Here we go. For your feet. What up, what up? What up, what up? Uh-oh. Got some heat. Here we go. 
for your feet. Today, Dodger starting pitcher Walker Bueller is receiving a distinctive pair of customized baseball cleats to wear during his next start. This stuff came out pretty cool. What do you think you want to do on the heel? Cuts logo? The cleats were designed in collaboration with Cuts Clothing, a company founded in 2016 by Stephen Borelli and best known for their versatile, customizable shirts. What do you think he'll do with the, with the cleats now? I think he's going to pitch a no-hitter. I mean, these shoes are zero runs. Zero runs. Zero runs. My name is Stephen Borelli. I'm the founder and CEO at Cuts. Me and Walker have had a relationship for about three years now. About six, seven months ago, I said, hey, man, we want to you know, do something cool with one of our closest homies. What if we made you a pair of cleats with our logo on it and you wore it on the field? And he you know, responded within two seconds. He said, yep, I'm in. I sent him the design. So the inspiration for the shoe design was really based on utilizing the Dodgers colors and then also incorporating some of our Cuts clothing fabric into the actual shoes. So we kind of took that as like a blank slate and then decided like, all right, what can we do? How can we incorporate that into the legendary Air Jordan 1 and then also make it a cleat? You know, when you think about the most iconic shoe is the Jordan 1. And so that's the shoe we, we decided to use. Uh, the classic Jordan 1 is, you know, 1985, Jordan wore it for the Chicago Bulls and it kicked off this like sneaker movement. The Air Jordan 1 is just an iconic shoe and we knew that we wanted something that was loud but also still well recognizable and something that people would look at and be like, that's a badass cleat. But yeah, this would be kind of cool right here. Yeah, I definitely think this is better. This just doesn't play well together. These, much better. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The shoelaces are going to be kind of cool too. And this part. You know, they told us they're going to hand stitch this in here. Did they really? <laughs> For Bueller's cleats design, the Cuts team also enlisted the services of LA-based shoe customizer, Dominic Chambrioni, also known as the shoe surgeon, who has experience working with professional athletes and other elite clientele. He takes apart shoes and does the most insane, crazy, cool designs you've ever seen in your entire life using the most exotic materials you can imagine, whether it's like a reptile leather as the Nike swoosh. It's more than just marker on shoe, it's more than paintbrush on shoe. And we're like, how can we create a shoe that's not over the top, not too loud, not, hey, look at me. So we customize the shoe by one, embodying what Dodger baseball is and, you know, with their Dodger blue. And one of the coolest things about uh, the cleat is it actually uses real baseball stitch around the heel of the shoe. So Walker, we kind of wanted to keep this a surprise for him throughout the entire planning, although we did kind of give him little hints and little sneak peeks of what was going on throughout the design process. But we also wanted that surprise element, so when he came and saw the shoes, there would be that initial first look. Oof. Damn. Dude, these are so fresh. This came out good, huh? Crazy. I love that stitch. So that's a real baseball, no? It's a real baseball stitch. Dude, this is epic. Damn. By an official baseball maker. I like the stitch. Most people do base like when they do cleats and stuff, they do too much. Yeah. Baseball stuff, and those like fit into the shoe too. I mean, we wanted to we wanted to do something that was uh, not over the top, not too crazy, and I think it's something that would be dope for you to pitch in. Those look good with the uni, I think. Oh yeah. For sure. That's a good idea. Well, what's your what's your favorite detail? Come on. I like the stitch. No, it's right there. This but is I think my favorite is <laughs> the signature for sure. It's the signature for sure. It's the little details. Do you try to play in the same cleats over and over? Like Yeah, I've got some weird superstitions with that. I used to change gloves if I lost, change cleats. <laughs> I for sure change cleats still, but I usually keep the same glove now. But yeah, if I get beat in a, in a game, I'll throw those cleats away. But if you kill it, do you, do you keep them? Keep them. I have to. Keep going? Yeah. In the playoffs, I go with new ones regardless, so. Yeah, these will be, might be my last start of the year against Oakland. Champions of the National League West, champions of the American League West, head to head this week at Dodger Stadium tonight. It's a big game for the Dodgers, even with things wrapped up as far as the division and the seeding goes, because Walker Buehler makes only his third outing over the last month, coming back from that blister. Off 
we go with a fastball downstairs 1 and 0 on La Stella. Here's a 3 2 and he got him swinging with a fastball. Wow that's encouraging two up two down he gets this one on the curve. High fastball gets Biscotti Bueller's third punch out. 3 2 he struck him out with a high fastball. Walker Bueller's night is finished he goes four innings gives up one hit one walk strikes out six. Fantastic outing and comeback for Walker Bueller. Hopefully everything came out well with that right index finger. Bueller's strong performance against the A's earns him the start six days later in a wild card series opener. Nothing that's happened over the last two months matters anymore. The real season begins tonight. Right now, it is simple. You win 13 games and you hoist the trophy. Game one of the wild card series between the Dodgers and Milwaukee Brewers with Walker Beeler taking the mound. He's only pitched in six and two thirds innings over the last 27 days. What will you be looking for out of Beeler in this start? I'm going to be looking at his makeup. He needs an environment where he is challenged. He knows who he wants to be, and he brings it all to the table in the big moments and in the playoffs. Live from Dodger Stadium, it's game one of the National League Wild Card Playoff Series. Dodgers have taken the field. And the big story with Bueller, the blister on the index finger of his right hand. He says he's fine. We will find out here very shortly. And Walker Bueller's pitch to Christian Yelich. And a filthy breaking ball. That's strike three. Down on strikes is Yelich, and we are underway. Braun swings and misses on a slider. Two up, two down. Ted Jerko coming up. He launches one to left field. Back goes A.J. Pollock. Great start for Walker Bueller. Betts finished the season at 292. 16 home runs and 39 runs batted in. This one driven to right field. It's deep. Back goes Braun. He's at the wall. It's off his glove. Betts will go into second base, lead off double for Mookie Betts. Good effort by Braun, but an extra base hit for Betts. Bueller receives early run support when the Brewers' Brent Suter struggles to find the strike zone in the first inning. Suter's 29th pitch of the first, Pollock, ball four. So the Dodgers take a two to nothing lead thanks to four walks given up by Suter here in the bottom of the first. And Mookie Betts comes up clutch in the second. There's a line drive into center field for a base hit. Taylor will score easily. And on his way to second base with a head first sliding double. Mookie Betts and the Dodgers take a 3 0 lead. Oh, a fastball by him at 96. Here's the 0 2. Fastball call strike three. Looking for strikeout number six. And there it is, a half dozen so far for Bueller. Call strike three. Struck out eight, but he gives up two runs, two hits, and our see a home run. It's a one run game. The Dodgers hold a tight three to two lead when Corey Seeger steps to the plate in the seventh. Yeah, this one is hit hard. Straight away center field, and that is deep, and that is gone. That's Corey Seeger all season long as he hits his 16th of the year. And he gives the Dodgers a cushion. They now lead it four to two. Ninth inning, Dodgers four, Brewers two. The pitch to Yelich. Swung on and missed strike three. And the Dodgers hang on and beat the Milwaukee Brewers four to two and take a one game to none lead in the best of three in the wild card series. I think for me personally, it's just trying to, to get to where I want to be, obviously, trying to keep getting better, keep progressing like I always do, and be a part of this team and, and push us to 12 more wins. I expected our guys to come out and play uh, with intent and focus, and they did exactly that. I thought the pitching was, was really good tonight, you know, and it's a playoff win.
as Backstage Dodgers continues. Kershaw, double digit strikeouts. Clayton Kershaw looks to close out the Brewers and change the postseason narrative. If this continues, this is going to go down as one of the great Kershaw postseason performances. After taking game one of the wild card series last night at the ravine, the Dodgers are now one win away from heading to the playoff bubble in Arlington, Texas. All eyes will be on Clayton Kershaw tonight, making his 26th career postseason start. Clayton Kershaw has anchored the Dodgers starting rotation for more than a decade. His career achievements, including eight all-star appearances, three Cy Young awards and the National League MVP award, make him a shoe in for the Baseball Hall of Fame. But if there's one blemish on Kershaw's impressive resume, it's his uneven performance in the postseason, one that Kershaw himself acknowledges. I've been known to be pretty stubborn, so I just kind of do the same things no matter what in between starts. I think that might not be the best idea at times, so try to figure out some things based on how you feel, and I think it will benefit me in the long run. Tonight, I want to get Kershaw on a roll. I don't want him to have to deal with the media after the game, what's going on with your playoff record. He gets on a roll for the whole month of October. We talk about the other guys and the other pitchers, but this is a key ingredient. I'm hopeful that some of the things that I've done because I've kind of been beat up in the past has prepared me to kind of maintain what I've got going right now. Anytime you have Clayton pitching for you, it's a huge advantage. I think our bullpen's in a good spot. I think Clayton, with an extra day, is in a great place, mentally, physically. And so, you know, our goal is to finish it out tonight. He's pitched in 10 postseasons. No one's ever pitched in 10 different postseasons without winning a World Series. That's what he's looking at this year. There it is, strikeout number one for Clayton Kershaw, caught by his buddy Austin Barnes. 2-2, two -two, breaking ball, strike three. See you later, Christian Yelich. Kershaw starts strong, but so does Brewers starter Brandon Woodruff. That's a strike three, and Muncie is gone. Third strikeout for Woodruff. And all strikeouts so far for Brandon Woodruff have been via the fastball. There's number four's Bellinger chased. Oh, that's a perfect pitch. That's strikeout number five for Woodruff. Pitcher's duel extraordinaire, Brandon Woodruff, toe to toe with Clayton Kershaw. Ooh, how about a little change up at 85? Kershaw's turn now. He's got four strikeouts. Woodruff's got six. Clayton Kershaw, a one, two, three inning. He's got five strikeouts. Goodness, Brandon Woodruff, eight strikeouts through four. In the bottom of the fifth, the Dodger offense finally shows signs of life. Bellinger reaches out, touches that one, and that's going to fall in front of Garcia. And this is big for the Dodgers. You get Bellinger on, good speed at first base. Now Woodruff is going to have to speed up his delivery. Taylor hits one back up the middle. Bellinger to second. And all of a sudden, it feels like a rally with two hits. There's Austin Barnes singled his first time up. This one up the middle and through. Taylor's going to come around to score in the bottom of the order for the Dodgers. Gives them a 1 0 lead as Austin Barnes, second hit of the night, drives in the first run of the game. Third time now that he's going to see Betts. He struck him out twice. Betts ropes. That's a fair ball down the line. That's going to bring in one. Here comes A.J. Pollock. Rounding third and heading home and scoring is Austin Barnes. Mookie Betts does it for the Dodgers. A double, and they lead it 3 to nothing. Charged with protecting a 3-0 lead, Kershaw continues to dominate. Kershaw continues to pitch well. He picks up strikeout number eight. Clayton has been very economical. Top of the sixth inning, just 65 pitches. 
that's the type of swings he's getting tonight. Yelich, the ninth strikeout of the night for Clayton Kershaw. Kershaw, double digit strikeouts. If this continues, this is going to go down as one of the great Kershaw postseason performances. Kershaw, 11 strikeouts, curveballs, and sliders. That's number 12, matching his postseason high. Clayton Kershaw is pitching a masterpiece tonight. The slider has been absolutely filthy to the right-handed hitters. Clayton Kershaw will walk off the mound with 13 strikeouts. An outstanding pitching performance from somebody who had the reputation of, eh, he struggles in the postseason. The numbers certainly support it, but he about faced on all the numbers tonight. After eight brilliant innings, where Kershaw allows no runs and just one walk, while setting a personal career postseason record with 13 strikeouts, Dave Roberts turns to the bazooka, 22-year-old Bruzdar Gratterall, to close out the game and series. This should do it. Taylor says, I got it. Kershaw gets a win, and the Dodgers advance. They win the wild card series, taking both games from the Milwaukee Brewers. An outstanding effort to at least silence the critics who claim he hasn't done in the postseason enough. He's well rested. He's in shape. Clayton Kershaw's got a lot left in the tank. We're about to see it in the next round. Kirsch was just determined tonight, and to see him go eight, uh, eight innings tonight, just uh, outstanding performance. I I'm sur sure right now he's enjoying tonight, but he's getting ready for that start, uh, you know, in the DS. It feels good right now. That's what being a starting pitcher is for, is to feel that win at the end of the game and um, enjoy it. This was a fun night for me. Get the postseason off to a good start. Now we get to get, to get going. Stay tuned for scenes from the next Backstage Dodgers. Ready to go, man. Let's get it going. When the team prepares for the National League Division Series in the Texas playoff bubble. That's got a chance. Yep. Wow. That's Apo Taco Homer right there. On the next Backstage Dodgers. The Dodgers are getting ready for a SoCal showdown in a bubble in Arlington, Texas against the Padres, the top two teams in the National League record-wise. I know that our guys are ready. I think that the we like the matchups potentially, but we still got to go out there and execute. I think we just have to be the steady selves that we, uh, that, that who we are. This is a new series, and so we have to uh, come out with some energy uh, uh, ready to go, because uh, you know they will. It's been our kind of MO for, for three, four years now, show up and try to win one game and do everything we can to, to win one game and then we'll worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. And uh, that's the same way we're gonna go about this series.